Hi, I'm Scarlett and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I post weekly videos about tarot, paganism, and magic. So for today's video, I thought I would show you what my favorite interpretations are of the 22 major arcana cards. And after this video is over, I encourage you to make your own video response and show me what your favorite major arcana cards are. So let's jump right in and get into it. Okay, let's get into showing you my 22 favorites. So for this video, you'll be seeing cards from the Botticelli Tarot, from the English Magic Tarot. You'll be seeing cards from the Night Sun Tarot, the classic Rider Waite, the Pagan Otherworlds, the Wild Unknown, and the Dark Days Tarot. And I'll also be including a couple cards from the True Black Tarot. And this is cheating a little bit because th this is not a complete deck yet, so it's still in the process of being made. But in the kind of introductory deck that I was given, there were so many amazingly beautiful cards that some of them I decided to include in my 22 favorites. So we will be starting with The Fool. And for the Fool, I have chosen the card from the Pagan Otherworlds deck. And you can see here, it's a classic interpretation of the Fool, um, similar to a uh, Rider Waite style. And I really like kind of the naturalistic interpretation with all the leaves and, and the bells here kind of announcing that he is about to join our world. So. This one I chose as my top favorite, though I do have a runner-up. And my runner-up for this card is from the Night Sun Tarot. So you can see it's a much different, uh, possibly darker aesthetic here. He um, is masked with little horns, and there are all these sigils or chaos magic symbols that he is wearing. Um, so I think that's kind of a unique and different style for the Fool, but I really connected with it. So next, moving on to the Magician. I have the Magician here from the True Black Tarot. And you can see that this card and, and this deck, all of the cards in this deck, work with light in the sense that when you turn them, they catch the light and kind of cast a metallic glow on the card. And you can see that in the title um, below here with the magician. And this card just definitely, I think, connects with that, that cosmic energy and power of the magician. So this one really stuck with me, though again, I do have a runner up. And my runner up is from the English Magic Tarot, which is a deck that shows um, oftentimes real people from English history and uh, magical traditions in English, in England. And this card in particular depicts a real person. His name was John Dee, and he was the court astrologer during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. So you can see here, it's very dynamic. He's turned away from us. It's like he's grasping down that power of the sun. And beneath him, you do still see all of the representations of the four suits here, along with some alchemical um, symbols below here as well. So I thought this one was very powerful, very action-packed uh, interpretation for the magician. So moving on to the High Priestess, we're going back to the Pagan Otherworlds deck. And honestly, a lot of the cards in my favorites are from the Pagan Otherworlds deck. It's just one of the top decks I I've found out there. It works for all kinds of reading types and styles, so uh, it's definitely made quite a prominent feature <laughs> in this video. Um, so you can see the High Priestess here, she's in her blue robe, and her blue robe is very fitted to her body, emphasizing her femininity. And she's got her Book of Knowledge, the moon symbols, and her toes being dipped into that realm of the subconscious. So I really connected with this uh, artistically beautiful 
interpretation of the High Priestess here. For the Empress card, we're moving on to the Botticelli Tarot. And this one does have a kind of gilded glow to it and shimmer when you hold it into the light. And I really connected with the kind of um, power that this card projects. Usually the Empress is shown in a nature scene, um, but historically the Empress and the Emperor cards referred to whoever was the Emperor and the Empress at the time in the earliest tarot decks. So I like how this card kind of harkens back to that tarot history a little bit. And it's it's a really beautiful card too, especially with that that glimmer of gold referencing, you know, she is royalty here. She is the Empress. And here we have a much different and rustic uh, vision of the Emperor. Um, so again, this one's from the Pagan Otherworlds, and I really connected with his expression, this kind of determination, um, maybe showing a bit of, of frustration with his leadership role, with, with his position, but he's still very steadfast here and, and powerful and, and alone, you know, in, in that background of, of mountains and those plains and that water. Here he is kind of alone trying to build a world for himself. So I really liked um, this more rustic style for the emperor. Though I do have a uh, runner-up, which is kind of fun. I really like this card. So again, this is from English Magic Tarot. And this too harkens back to the time where the Emperor and the Empress cards depicted who was in leadership. Um, so this Emperor is King Henry VIII. Um, so uh, you can see him in all of his royal splendor here as a young king. And we do know what's to come for him and, you know, his rule. And while very powerful, there was a lot of drama um, as he ruled England. So it's got a great story to it by incorporating a historical figure here and an image of kind of a, a fool character behind him too, sneaking, sneaking behind that door. Moving on to the hero font, which you might also see it called uh, the pope or the high priest and here it's a very darker interpretation of the hero font and i chose this one because it tells a story um, you can see him here and normally there are his accolades or people other people within the church before him but here in fact they are traitors um perhaps to to him. Here he is holding a dagger about to strike the hero font. And here he's holding what looks to be like a ruler and a triangle, maybe trying to show the hero font um, science and, and the power of science and he's rejected it. So I really like how this is taking a um, more nuanced view of the hero font and depicting it through this image and I definitely like how there is a story being told in this card. And again, this one is from the Night Sun Tarot. So for the Lover's card, we are going back to the Botticelli deck where the images from the Botticelli deck are taken from his various paintings. And this is such a beautiful scene. Um, I believe this was from a painting depicting a scene out of Greek mythology. And I just love how the two lovers are wrapped up in each other in that embrace. It's so feminine, it's so um, lovely and, and kind of warm and kind. So I really connect with, with this style of, of the lover's card. Moving on to the chariot. So again, I have a card from the True Black Tarot, and uh, again, it's got that kind of luminescence as you hold it into the light there. And I just love how unique this one is. Uh, here you see maybe reins, but you don't see um, the animals before him. Usually the chariot is shown with sphinxes or lions that he's controlling, and instead you kind of have to fill in those blanks. But here you have two doves holding a blindfold across his eyes and a hint of that gold uh, laurel wreath crown representative of the victory of the chariot. So it's a very um, masculine and powerful card here that I just really love. 
Though I do also enjoy the Chariot from the Pagan Otherworlds deck again, and with a bit of a unique interpretation using um, mountain goats <laughs> instead of the classic sphinx or horses that you see in a lot of other decks. But again, you get that action pose, the sense of movement in this card. So for strength, I chose the Pagan Otherworlds deck again for my favorite and mostly because I love the idea of using a black bear. Traditionally strength is shown with a lion, so I really pay attention to when a deck chooses to do something a little bit different, like in this case showing a black bear. I think all of the um, interpretations of the card of strength do still apply when he switched the animal from a lion to a bear. Um, so I really like how they kind of chose to do something a bit different. This card of strength too, it also does something different. And instead of a lion or a bear, in fact has a snake here. And here she has um, some uh, arrows and uh, an infinity symbol and some grains of wheat. Um, here too, and all these axes kind of glowing in the light in the background. It's a very powerful card uh, for this interpretation. And one more runner up for strength. This is the Night Sun Tarot, and you do have that classic lion, um, but such a powerful female figure here. Um, usually, the female in uh, the card strength is depicted as very feminine, usually wearing white. But here you can see something else entirely. This is a battle goddess <laughs> type figure with her lion that she is controlling. And it's just such a, a beautiful card. So moving on to the Hermit, I have a fun one here. So this is from the Wild Unknown Tarot. And this has a little tortoise. Um, so it is a tortoise with a lantern on top of it. So the hermit usually does carry a, a lantern or a pointed star. So I like how they chose um, to put the lantern on top of the tortoise and the use of a tortoise makes a lot of sense. As you know here you can see he is going inward. He is literally going inside his shell. So it really connects with the meaning of the hermit. So for Wheel of Fortune, I have as my favorite this one from the True Black Tarot that they're actually calling Destiny, but I think it has the same role as the Wheel of Fortune, and you can see that, that glimmer of light between the triangles, the elemental symbols here, and I just really connect with that overpowering kind of cosmic energy here, that sense that this card is not really referencing something of our world, but something we cannot yet understand. And my runner up for this card was the Wild Unknown, again with a dream catcher for the Wheel of Fortune. So I really like um, this one with the, the colors of the thread here and the sun and the moon on both sides. Again, a really kind of unique interpretation. So for Justice, I have this card from the Botticelli deck. Um, this is bright, a lot of um, light colors here, though I would say that while this one is my favorite of the decks I currently own, I still haven't found a Justice card that I really connect with. So if you have a favorite Justice card um, that you really like, do please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to see what your favorite Justice card is. So next we are going into the Hanged Man. And again from the Night Sun Tarot, a much darker version of the card here with his head in a bird cage. The trees um, that he's hung to are, are stabbing him and, and here he holds the key but his hands are wrapped up. He's not able to free himself. So a very kind of dark interpretation here but I really connect with it. It seems to really um, you know, connect with my subconscious here and, and um, this interpretation I find really, really inspiring, tapping into something deep. So for death, this was a very hard one and I have 
chosen for my favorite, the Pagan Otherworlds. Um, so just aesthetically from a composition standpoint, um, this image is beautiful. It flows. I love these um, war wings made out of arrows as you hold his sky up above. Um, I love how there's a flower behind him, a sense of as you know death passes, new life forms, that sense of transition that you get with this card. Though I am really in love as well with death from the true, um, sorry, from the Night Sun Tarot, um, because it's something you do not see very often at all. Death depicted as a pregnant woman. Um, this is the reason I bought this deck. When I saw this death card, that's why I bought the Night Sun Tarot, because I love this concept of choosing to portray death as pregnant, um, as a symbol of not, you know, something ending, but something new beginning as well. Though I also really like the death card from the Wild Unknown deck too. It's just kind of a little dark, more morbid, but definitely let me know in the comments of these three death cards, the Pagan Otherworlds, the Night Sun, or the Wild Unknown, which one of these three connects with you the most. So next we have the Temperance card, and this is from the Pagan Otherworlds deck. And you can see it's a beautiful angel here with a halo as she pours that water from her two goblets. And like the, the Justice card, while I do like this interpretation and this is the favorite of the decks I currently own, I'm still on the search for a, um, another Temperance card that I would connect with more. So in the comments, let me know what your favorite Temperance card is too. So moving on to the Devil, again with the Pagan Otherworlds deck. Um, so this one is very different than most interpretations of the Devil. He's got this kind of matted suit that he's wearing and these human faces are being kind of sucked into his body over time like they're becoming him. Um, so I just really connect with this unique interpretation. I haven't seen anything like this card before. And this was um, one of the main reasons I decided to buy the Pagan Otherworlds deck was for this card. Though I also uh, do like this interpretation from the Dark Days Tarot. Here she is um, with kind of flowers on her face but then a darker mask that it looks like she could put on and take off at will. Maybe showing kind of that complexity of the Devil card here. Moving on to the tower, I have a very disturbing image for you. So this is from the Night Sun Tarot. And this one is very dark. It almost, you can't quite tell what it is, but it does almost look like bodies are kind of falling out of this window here um, with this um, kind of cosmic lightning crashing into that tower and this um, seal behind it. Uh, very dramatic, very dark. Um, I also like this one from the English Magic Tarot that depicts the Tower of London and the uh, ravens that are always atop the Tower of London. And they actually do feed ravens at the Tower of London because I forget what the exact phrase is, but something to the effect of if the ravens ever leave, the English Empire will fail. So. <laughs> So they actually do hire someone to feed ravens at the Tower of London still to this day. But I like this one. I like the energy. I like the drama in this image. So next we have the star. So I have the classic star from the Rider Waite um, deck. And this one I just find so feminine, so beautiful. The colors are relaxing and healing. So this one is just kind of the perfect star image for me for this deck, or sorry, for this 22 favorites video. So next onto the moon, and here I have again from the Botticelli deck, so you can get that nice glimmer, that bright um, colors you can see here, and an angel flying from below. 
Though I do also like a darker approach here with the wild unknown, um, the mystery, the darkness, the moon. So I really do like kind of these two interpretations. And it's a bit tough for me to, dis to decide which one I like more. Probably um, the Botticelli wins um, by a hair, but... <laughs> But overall, these two ones are great interpretations of the moon. Here you have the sun, very bright and resplendent from the English Magic Tarot. So you get those bright yellows, the sunflowers, the reds, um, and this bright clothes emblematic of that success and, and manifesting that prosperity and, and success for yourself. So I really do like this, this kind of bright and dramatic interpretation. We have two cards left. So next we have Judgment from the Pagan Otherworlds deck. Um, I like how realistic this image seat, uh, appears. Usually with Judgment, it's so kind of um, grotesque perhaps as the kind of people are coming back from the dead. But here it looks almost like something you could see um, in real life. The figures are just so realistic as is the angel here. Um, so I, I do kind of like this more um, more Renaissance aesthetic here for that Judgment card. And finally, we have The World. The World from the Rider Weight deck. And this one here is just a perfect card to, to end this favorites video. Um, it's bright in, up in the sky with that beautiful purple sash and her two wands representing the completion of the major arcana. Um, so again, thank you so much for, for watching and I would really love to hear from you or have you do a video response as to what your favorite cards are from the Major Arcana. I've seen a lot of other people online do similar videos, so I thought it'd be fun to show you guys a bit of what my favorite cards are. Um, so thanks so much for watching, and again, you know, this is just kind of talking about the um, aesthetics of the cards, so which cards connected the most to me visually. Though I do have other videos and I'm planning on doing even more about the meanings of the individual cards. So if you are interested in really going into the cards and what they represent and what they mean and how to interpret them, definitely check out some of the other videos on my channel. Or if you're wanting to take lessons, I do offer one-on-one -on -one lessons through Skype and you can find those on my website, Arcane Alchemy. So I'll put that link below in case you want to check it out. And if you are, again, new to my channel, do please take a moment to subscribe if you like this video and click that like bu button down below as well. So I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all next week. Bye.